Formula E have allowed eight new uh, companies to come into the sport to provide technical uh, parts to the teams. Now these manufacturers vary from some of the teams themselves, Renault Sport, which at the moment do not actually present any hardware to the uh, series, but do produce uh, some consulting assistance for the uh, teams, plus a couple of outside companies with experience in electric motors. For season two, what this means is that these uh, manufacturers will be able to supply different motors, um, power control units and potentially gearboxes to the teams which means that the teams will then start to have a performance difference because at the moment they're all running exactly the same format um, powertrain as each other. Currently all of the cars run exactly the same powertrain so you have the Williams Advanced Engineering battery and then the McLaren Applied Technologies e-motor and the power control unit. Now the e-motor and the power control unit are exactly the same as that used in McLaren's P1 road car. Uh, they've been changed in very slightly different ways to suit the installation on the Formula E car, but by and large they have exactly the same power output and they're looking identical to the Formula E elements. The motor which initially was developed from some of the Formula 1 KERS units, the uh, McLaren Applied Technologies uh, e-motor, existed and it was designed and on the shelf ready for Formula E. So when Formula E were out looking and tendering for uh, electric motor, they went to McLaren Applied Technologies and they were able to use this one. And this is a relatively small sized unit, therefore it needed a gearbox to multiply the torque that it produces to get the performance on track. In season two, um, the teams are now allowed to develop uh, with these eight new manufacturers, um, new electric motors, uh, with the, uh, also with the power control unit, and potentially with a gearbox. As we explained, the current McLaren P1 derived electric motor is a relatively small sized unit, and therefore needs a gearbox to multiply the torque to get the performance. Teams looking at different options for next year in season two, could potentially have one or two very large motors which completely do away with the need for a gearbox as we would recognise it. They would just need some form of differential or bevel gears to get the power out to the individual wheels. So we will see potentially some very different format rear ends to the cars in season two, depending on whether they're running the McLaren e-motor, a different manufacturer's e-motor or potentially one large one which then does away with a Hewland gearbox. Different systems are each going to have their own benefits in terms of weight and installation. Um, the larger motor, which would run without a gearbox, the motor itself will be far heavier than the existing McLaren motor. However, you do away with some of the weight and complexity in the gearbox. Overall, I will imagine the cars will end up back at exactly the same base weight in order to make sure that the cars are equalised.